Hey, welcome back. The last video was the first in the series of marketing strategies videos, which focused on an introduction really to strategies and specifically looking at market segmentation, product service differentiation and positioning. This video now is going to focus more, is going to move on to, sorry, products, specifically goods and or services, and looking at products and the importance of effective branding and effective packaging. So this is the first of the four P's, so product and followed, that was followed by price, promotion and place. So in terms of products, of fairly straightforward, I think, what actually is a product, it's important to understand that before we move forward. Products are goods or services that can be offered in an exchange for the purpose of satisfying a need or want. So people are engaging in services or they're going to a service or they're purchasing a product in an effort to satisfy a need or want. The total product concept refers to the tangible and intangible benefits that a product possess possesses. <coughs> Branding and packaging are extremely important elements of a specific product. Uh, and brand, we'll start with branding firstly. So branding relates to the brand name, the term, the symbol, the design, or any combination of these that identifies a specific product and distinguishes it, distinguishes it from its competitors. If you think about major brands like Coca-Cola, like Nestle, like Tesla, like Mercedes, those brands are powerful brands and, they re and they're using uh, names, using terms, using symbols to separate themselves and to market themselves effectively against their competitors. Marketers aim to get customers to instantly recognise their brand name and the product associated with them, hence so much money is spent on uh, branding specifically and getting a brand out there in the marketplace and having it recognised. The brand acts as a summary or trigger for a range of attributes that customers associate with the product. So you think uh, Coca-Cola, for example, and you immediately have a certain image of that. You think Tesla, and you automatically think of certain things. Maybe potentially they're environmental things, they're potentially ethical, potentially it's what a cool car it is, but it evokes a certain image. Brand name is that part of the brand that can be spoken, so the name, the brand names I've been referring to, Tesla, Coca-Cola, for example. A trademark signifies that the brand name is registered and the business has exclusive use to that brand name. And a symbol or logo is a graphic representation that identifies a business or product. So the Coca-Cola logo, for example, the Tesla logo, for example, the Qantas logo, for example. And undoubtedly, a strong brand name adds value to the product and can build customer loyalty. And think about back in the finance topic when looking at goodwill, and we talked at the time then about the significant value that a particular brand or logo has in a monetary sense in relation to goodwill. Undoubtedly, the, the McDonald's or Coca-Cola or KFC or Tesla, these brand names would be worth billions of dollars if, if they're up for sale. Okay, so in terms of brand uses, there are some different branding uses. Logos, for example, a symbol that identifies a brand, a slogan, a phrase that identifies a brand, a jingle, think about those... Um, yeah, you know, spray and wipe ads, for example, that used to run with a jingle and they sort of got stuck in your head. And brand names like Coke or Nike. In terms of branding strategies, branding uh, strategies are usually classified according to who, sorry, brands are usually classified according to who owns them. When a manufacturer owns a brand, it's referred to as a manufacturer's brand or national brand. And you've got brands on the screen there like Sunbeam, Kraft, Rip Curl. Okay, they are the manufacturer's brand. Uh, or otherwise known as national brands. <coughs> Sometimes in terms of branding, private or house brand is owned by a retailer. So Meyer is, has come out with their own brand. For example, David Jones has got their own brand. Most of the uh, discount department stores have your big W's, your targets, for example. Cotton On is an example of a house brand. Um, and in addition to that you've got generic brands or products with no individual brand name at all and they just carry the name of the product and are in plain packaging. So you've got Coles Natural Water for example, some select chocolate there from Woolworths um, and some of the home brands that Coles utilises. So just to reinforce the power of a brand, if you look at a can of Coca-Cola there, it's got its brand of Coke and the famous uh, specific writing and you compare that to a a uh, can of cola, same colour, but it doesn't have the Coca-Cola brand on it. Okay, it's a significantly different product and customers have a real recognition of this Coca-Cola brand, but not of a, just a, bl a blank red can. 
Okay, we'll have a look at that in class in terms of um, some comparisons. In terms of packaging, so that's all about branding. Packaging is equally as important and involves the development of a container and a graphic design for a product. So what that product and or service is going to be wrapped in or surrounded in or contained in. And it's an important strategy because it can serve as a form of advertising at the point of sale that differentiates the products, differentiates the product from similar products or after the sale to encourage repeat purchases. And often that quality of packaging, I've mentioned Apple in class before, is how important the importance that they place on packaging when selling iPads, when selling laptops, when selling phones, for example, it's a real point of difference for them. And that in terms of their product, they have really placed an emphasis on packaging as a way to differentiate their product from their competitors. It's a, packaging serves a number of purposes. It protects the product. It informs the consumer about the product. You buy an Apple product and you know with the logo on the box and the white box that it's an Apple product. It promotes the product and distinguishes it from its competitors. So you're walking around the streets of Chatswood after you've bought a new Apple iPad with your Apple box inside an Apple bag and it's advertising. People know you've got that product. Also think about Fitness First, for example, they give away backpacks, I think, to new memberships. It's a, it's a sense of packaging, really, and it's a very clever marketing strategy in that packaging because people then wear that backpack and they're constantly advertising the Fitness First brand. It protect, protects against misuse or tampering and it attracts customers' attention like I was just talking about with Apple and with Fitness First. Important point also that in the, over the long term, if a product needs a redesign, go back to the product life cycle and think about when the product is at the end of the life cycle, potentially needs a renewal. One way to renew it could, could be to change the packaging. Change that packaging up and try to create a point of difference and a, a renewal for that product. Some examples here of products, you've got Barocca in the top left corner there, a couple of their packaging, <coughs> and their packaging can also be used to make a claim about a product. So there's a small claim on the Barocca uh, um, packaging there. It can be used to be functional, so the Barocca Twist and Go, for example, is functional. Uh, it can contain information, and increasingly people want that information about ingredients in particular, you know, how much sugar is in a particular product. Uh, and it can develop positioning of the product. We talked about positioning under product service differentiation. Things that you might see in terms of labelling on packaging, you know, I think we understand this, but ingredients, operating procedures, so how to actually operate a drill, for example, if it's the packaging that your drill comes in. The shelf life of the product, you know, use by dates, package size, what's the size of this particular item. And then where was this particular country made? And this is an important point in terms of packaging. Um, there are so many different uh, aspects to this and it has become law uh, under the Competition Consumer Act and under Australian Consumer Law in terms of the country of origin must be appropriately um, labelled. And you can see some different labels there. So, for example, made in Australia from more than 50% local ingredients. There's four different um, packaging uh, displays and by law now that needs to be displayed appropriately. Food labels are unique as well and they need to identify the name of the food, the batch number, the, the address of the supplier, list of ingredients, the date, country of origin, so additional packaging is actually required on an item by law. These are a couple of examples I run through in class of examples of packaging or repackaging and, and changing the marketing strategy of a product that has been very successful or is in fact been an uh, outright failure. Okay, that's it for packaging. The next video we'll move on to the price.